Hey guys, my name is Sam, and for those of you who do not know me, I am a 26 year old from Ontario, Canada, and I just recently had gastric bypass surgery. As of right now, I'm about six months out, and I'm sharing my journey with you guys. So we are leading up to the day of surgery, and that will be coming in one of my next videos. Today, I wanted to talk about my post-op diet. So most often in Canada, what will happen is you'll be on something that's called OptiFast, and that was my last video that I posted, my OptiFast story. I ended up being allergic to it, so I did have to switch to a modified protein diet, and today I will be taking you through what that modified protein diet looked like for me. So the day that I was told that I was to stop taking OptiFast was one of the scariest days of my life because the post-op diet for me, I had to be on for four weeks and five days, and I had already been through 10 days of the OptiFast program, and I was really scared that I was gonna mess something up with the new program that I was supposed to be on and not shrink my liver enough and not be able to have the surgery because if they go in and they realize that your liver is still too large, they won't be able to perform the surgery safely and they just won't do it. So I was really scared that there was going to be the opportunity for failure, but everything ended up being okay. My clinic is really thorough and my dietitian helped me along every step of the way. I was really, really lucky to have the team that I did. So the program that I was on was called the Bariatric Surgery Protein Sparing Modified Fast 900 Calories. That's what the whole title of the document was that I received from the hospital. And it says, the purpose of this diet is to mimic OptiFast, the liquid meal replacement recommended before bariatric surgery. Four times daily, you will have a meal or snack that provides about 23 grams of protein, 16 grams of carbs, and six to eight grams of fat. So this was definitely a really low calorie diet that I was on and it actually ended up being one of the easier diets that I've ever been on. I was on the Dr. Bernstein diet before and it never felt like it was this easy or this enjoyable. I did end up losing about 40 pounds on this pre-op diet, so I was really excited about it and obviously my surgery went well, so it definitely worked. This is not a long-term thing and this is also not what the hospital that I went to recommends. But unfortunately, this was the circumstance that we were met with, what with my allergy, so we had to do what we had to do. So when I was finally able to get into contact with the hospital, I was actually at work and I had brought my shake for my lunch that day and nothing else because I didn't really think that there was any other option other than OptiFast. I kind of thought I was just going to have to struggle through it and take Benadryl and Tylenol as needed to get through the four weeks and five days, but... Thank God they have backup plans because I really don't think that I could have done it. So the day that I was told to stop the OptiFast diet, I was at work and I was not prepared to actually go and get something for lunch, but luckily there is a Subway just up from my work, so I ended up getting a salad that was pretty basic. Um, lettuce, cucumber, onion, olives, tomatoes, some pickles. I got a little bit of sub sauce and mayonnaise for some fat and I got the rotisserie chicken as my protein. It was the best salad I have ever had in my whole life. Nothing has ever tasted as good as that did. And I ate that salad for about three days because I didn't eat it for every meal. I kind of broke it up because I you know, it's hard to judge with something like that how much of something they're putting into it. So I had to bump up the amount of protein and just stagger the veg and fat throughout other days. Throughout this, I am gonna insert some pictures of meals that I would have all the time, but first I just wanted to go over what the basic guidelines were that I was given. So for meals, which three times each day, I would have three ounces of lean meat, lean chicken, fish, or three egg whites. I was to have one serving of grains, one serving of vegetables, and one serving of fat. And each day I was allowed a snack, which was one cup of plain Greek yogurt, or three quarters of a cup of cottage cheese, or two to three ounces of lean meat, or 20 to 25 grams of protein powder one serving of fruit or a grain, and an optional one serving of fat. 
I was told to drink six to eight cups of fluid per day and just carry on that way until the day before surgery. And at that point, the day before surgery, I was told to consume low residue foods, which was full fluids, basically protein powder mixed with water or skim milk, tomato soup, plain yogurt, cottage cheese, applesauce, stuff like that, stuff that my body didn't have to break down so that it was not there the day of surgery. So the protein options that I was given for this diet were egg whites, tuna, chicken, yogurt, protein powder, cottage cheese, tilapia, and other things like that. I remember a couple times I actually did make pork tenderloin. I can't actually find the list of foods that I was given to choose from, but those were a few of the options and I stuck pretty strictly to those things because they were easy. The carb options that I had were apples, rice cakes, rice, banana, couscous, English muffins, which became like my favorite thing in the whole world, Melba toast, and frozen berries. Like I said, I stuck most of the time to English muffins, but I did definitely enjoy some couscous every now and again. I found a love for couscous that I never knew that I had. Vegetable options, pretty standard, like red pepper, onion, spinach, salad, broccoli, mushrooms, which I can't have because I'm allergic to them, asparagus, cucumber, and yeah, pretty much any vegetable you can think of. I ate a lot of pickles as well. Fats were like things like egg yolks, so if I was having two egg whites, I was also allowed to have one full egg. Salad dressing, butter, hemp seeds, peanut butter, and oil. So if I was cooking something, I could cook it in oil, but that meant that I couldn't really add a fat to it. So I did a lot of cooking in my pressure cooker, so that way I didn't have to add a lot of fat to the meats that I was making. I do have a picture of a grocery haul that I did, and I was super excited on this day. I took a few videos, actually, of the things that I bought. It was really exciting. It was a new part of the journey, and it was a little bit of a hiccup, but it was something that I had to work around and something that was really unique that I hadn't heard a lot of people having to do. So I was really excited. I also have a few pictures of some meals that I ended up having, which was cottage cheese, Melba toast, I always had some olives on the side because I really liked olives and cottage cheese, um, cucumber, and salad dressing. The next meal that I have a picture of is a half a cup of green beans, two pickles, three ounces of chicken breast, half of an English muffin, and a tablespoon of peanut butter. So that was definitely one of my favorites as well. A favorite breakfast of mine was an egg white scramble with cut up bell peppers and onions, half an English muffin, and one tablespoon of peanut butter. A snack that I made at night was plain Greek yogurt, and then I made this Splenda blueberry sauce. It was kind of like a bit of a jam sauce type of thing. It was delicious. In this picture, there is shredded chicken breast with couscous and sauteed bell peppers, red onions, and scallions. And because I used so little of the peppers, I did end up having some cucumbers on the side this night. And in this picture, once again, I had the couscous, but instead of chicken this time, I used pork. So I had a pork tenderloin that I made in my Instant Pot with the bell peppers, green onions, red onions, and cucumber with salad dressing on the side. So as I said before, I did take a video of the foods that I ended up purchasing. So I will go ahead and insert the clips of my grocery haul now. Okay guys, so welcome to the first part of my grocery tour. This was the vegetable section. And as you can see, I got some bell peppers. I also got these mini sweet peppers, but they didn't end up working out as they did hurt my stomach for some reason. I ended up getting some slicer tomatoes, as well as some cherry tomatoes just for cooking and using to put on English muffins. Um, who could live without pickles? Not me. So I definitely got many jars of those, as well as my olives that I couldn't live without. Next, I got my green onions. I used those in a lot of my recipes just to add flavor and so it didn't feel like I was missing out on anything. Okay, so the second part is the carb portion of the haul. 
Um, got some bananas for slicing up. Once again, putting on some English muffins with peanut butter. Didn't do that very often, but I did use a lot of those frozen blueberries. The applesauce came in handy for after surgery, but also for the day before surgery. And I didn't end up using that pasta. It just was too high in carbs and calories for me to really justify on this diet. Melba toast. I love to have melba toast with my cottage cheese and olives or with tuna. And of course, my English muffins, my saving grace. <laughs> Also found a new love and appreciation for Quaker Crispy Minis. Um, I still love Quaker Crispy Minis, uh, especially the butter popcorn flavored ones to this day. So now we are moving on to the protein portion of the grocery haul. I got my pork tenderloin, which I use quite a bit. Got a lot of meals out of it because three ounces, I mean, goes pretty far. <laughs> of course, I got my cottage cheese. I eat this every single day and I still do. I eat it now, especially post-op, but for the first few days post-op, it was really great to have. I got a nice carton of uncracked large eggs. Extra large eggs, actually. Then I got some Simply Egg Whites because it was just it was easy for me to measure them out and figure out how many calories were in them. I'm not very good at um, separating eggs still, so do with that information what you will. Those tilapia fillets are still in my freezer. Never ended up using them. I didn't want to stray too far. I found out what worked for me and I kept it pretty simple. So the last part of this grocery haul is me just showing you a mixed bag of the odds and ends that I got. So for my fats, I got my Calorie Wise Rancher's Choice and Greek Feta and Oregano Dressing. I also got the Kraft Only Peanuts peanut butter, but I ended up not really using it because I could justify the 10 extra calories that are in regular peanut butter. These soups that I got, I will just say I only got them because I was craving soup, but I could not justify the amount of carbs and calories that were in them. I didn't really look at it when I left the grocery store with them. I also got decaffeinated Earl Grey tea. I was only allowed decaf beverages, so that was really nice to find. And of course my Splenda. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you want to stay up to date on my journey and see the next video as it comes out, you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button along with the notification bell to be notified when I post. I'm kind of trying to figure out a schedule right now, so bear with me. I'm thinking it's going to be every Monday from now on that I'm going to post a video, so fingers crossed that it keeps going that way. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today and thank you everyone for your continued love and support. I hope that you guys are having a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.